Hi, this is Roger Peterson. First of all, let me wish everybody the best for 2021. Thank you for all your feedback, comments, and suggestions and support for this channel. Now, the purpose of this video is to give you an overview of the legal requirements coming up for 2021 and for us to review what is going on in the country on both the economic front, healthcare, and even a little bit of politics. So let's get started first with the to-do list. This to-do list will be for those of you that own property in Costa Rica or own a company registered here in Costa Rica or intend to have either one of those in 2021. So let's get started. The annual company tax will be due for all companies registered in Costa Rica and the due date is January 31st of 2021. For inactive companies, which are holding companies, for example, holding a property, the amount due is approximately $115. It's going to vary because of the exchange rate at the time that you pay it. Second, income tax returns are due by March 31st of 2021. If you have an active company or carry out a business or trade in Costa Rica, then you will need to file a Costa Rican tax return. Also, this is the year for the first time the government is requiring that inactive companies also file a tax return to disclose company assets. This requirement has been a bit contentious since an inactive company does not have any commercial or economic activity, which raises questions about the obligation to file the income tax return in the first place. For now, that is the official position, so the filing is due in March. If any changes arise, I will post it on the website. The third item on the agenda will be part two of the shareholder and beneficial owner disclosure form. If you recall, we discussed this once before since it became a mandatory filing in 2019. Now we were spared in 2020 due to COVID, but now they're indicating that the filings must be done once again by April 30th of 2021. Next on the agenda are items related to property ownership. The first one is municipal property taxes. So if you own a property, you have to pay your property taxes by March 31st of 2021. Now, if any of you have a home that's been defined as a luxury home, according to the law, then you're also going to have to file the luxury home tax, and that is due by January 31st of 2021. Next, I'm going to switch gears here and talk about the pending laws that were related to attracting retirees and investment in Costa Rica. I had done a couple of videos before talking about new legislation that was pending, uh, one to attract baby boomers, retirees, and investors, um, and other laws. So what is the current status of those? What is the update? I'm getting uh, emails and messages regarding, Roger, what's going on? What's the latest with those? So let's fill you in now. Okay, the law to attract baby boomers, retirees, and investors, which provided um, a free duty-free vehicle and uh, household goods that could be imported to Costa Rica, that law uh, was pending before the legislature. It went through several committees, came out of those committees fine, it looked good. Uh, then it went to several governmental agencies. They also greenlighted the bill, uh, but then it hit a snag with the Comptroller General of the Republic of Costa Rica. They objected to some of the language regarding the exemption of taxes from vehicles that were gonna be brought in. And so right now it's being sent back to the legislature so they can review the findings of the Comptroller General. So what does that mean? Uh, it means a delay. Uh, so let's see what happens. Let's see what comes out. Uh, difficult to give you a time frame right now, uh, but definitely it's not going to be quick. The second law that's pending before the legislature was the one to attract digital nomads. That one is looking very promising. So far, no objections. It would allow digital nomads to work out of Costa Rica with one year work visas. This one is pending vote before the legislature, but this one we expect to pass fairly soon. The third proposed law is one that wants to promote film production in Costa Rica. So the idea is to offer incentive to film companies that will set up in Costa Rica for film production. This one's also pending before the legislature. No time frame given on when this one will pass. Now let's switch over to talk about a little bit about the health uh, in Costa Rica. So like most other places around the globe, the COVID pandemic has dealt a blow to the Costa Rican economy and has put pressure on our healthcare system. Here are the current numbers. We have more than 184,000 cases. We have uh, more than 2,400 uh, deaths and more than 500 people hospitalized. So it's not going down. Despite that, 
the businesses remain open, the airport is open as well, and I do see a lot of people out and about trying to live normal a life as they can under these circumstances. You can check the COVID information site at covid19.go.cr. Also, you can go to the Costa Rican Tourism Institute site. I'll put a link in the description where you can get the latest information in case there's any changes in regulations. Okay, in this section, Costa Rica in the news. Let's look at some positive mentions of Costa Rica. First, International Living released the 2021 Global Retirement Index and put Costa Rica as the number one retirement destination. Number two, Chef Gordon Ramsay was spotted in Puerto Viejo on the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica, filming a special for National Geographic. And if you hadn't had a chance to look at the series by Zac Efron called Down to Earth, where he visits an echo village in Costa Rica, it was a very interesting show. Now that we had a little bit of positivity, let's switch over and talk about the economy. There's no doubt 2020 for Costa Rica was a catastrophic economic decline. Any recovery is going to be slow and painful even through 2021. According to the IMF, Costa Rica would have the slowest growth in 2021 in the region with an estimated growth rate around 2.3%. Costa Rica closed 2020 with an unemployment rate of greater than 20%. And according to the OECD, it is expected to hover right around the same number throughout 2021. So after political pressure to reject negotiations and uh, some strikes that occurred in the country uh, over the loans with the IMF, over structural loans, uh, Costa Rica is not going to have any choice but to go back to the negotiating table and obtain that funding from the IMF. However, despite that, the Life Sciences and Tech Center of Costa Rica is expanding pretty well. Hopefully they can renew their Life Sciences Forum, which have been very well received in the past. I was very pleased to be here today at the Life Sciences Forum. I was very impressed by the, the speakers and their content. It covered a wide range of information. And I was also pleased to see that so many people were connecting with each other. A company called Microvention Terumo announced in December it would invest $80 million in Costa Rica and generate over 2,000 skilled jobs. Intel, which had left Costa Rica a couple of years ago, decided to come back to Costa Rica, invest $350 million, and create 200 additional jobs for 2021. So luckily, Costa Rica has been diversifying over the years, um, and its offshoring manufacturing sector has been growing steadily so it is not as dependent on tourism as it was many 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 years ago we are also starting our political season since we have the presidential elections in costa rica for february 6th of 2022 in that election we also elect the 57 legislative representatives of the national congress now elections mean that the different political parties in the country start posturing for political advantages and stop cooperating among themselves. Our current legislative branch is made up of seven political parties, and none of them have a majority which forces them to work together. The political party of the current president, the Citizen Action Party, only has 10 legislators out of 57. In Costa Rica, consecutive re-election is not allowed. So the current president, Carlos Alvarado, will be out of office in 2022. And then it's a matter of determining which political party candidate wins the upcoming election, and how the new legislature will be made up. Well, that wraps up my 2021 Costa Rica update. As always, thank you for watching the video. If you have any comments or questions, please post them in the section, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.